Good morning, everybody. Sorry for the little drama here. <laughs> Just a little, uh, little sports injury. Um, pleasure to be here, Richard. Uh, Rebecca, thank you for inviting me. Again, I, I've uh, been invited in the past, but unfortunately, this is the time of year we have our, our annual board meetings and, and uh, I travel around quite a bit. But I'm, I'm grounded now for a couple months, so it's my, it's my pleasure to be here. Uh, well, I, I think. Uh, you know, kudos to the team for putting the agenda together because I, I think for those of you that are here, you can actually see um, and hear that one, uh, this is a very exciting time to be in the Philippines um, uh, in terms of our stage of, of economic development, but also uh, the, the, the nature of discussions from the equity cap markets, the Philippines, which are, some of our slides actually will generally correlate with yours. I'll talk about the M&A market, the, the private transactions, and then Georgia on the ASEAN level. Please, please, please bear with me. Please get a drink. It's a little bit of effort. <laughs> So, a little bit of background. We, we're a mid-sized conglomerate in the Philippines. Uh, we're not very broad, but we're deep in the segments that we participate in. Uh, I'm on the, the financial services side, which includes a, a, a licensed investment banking firm, strictly in the Philippines. Um, in Singapore, we also have a licensed asset management firm um, based there. And in Silicon Valley and in Manila, we have a venture capital private equity arm. Each of these business units have separate management teams, separate PL, separate investors, separate stakeholders. Um, the, the group also has uh, uh, property development management. Uh, we, we, we own the largest industrial state developer in the country. We own the World Trade Center, uh, which next week is uh, hosting the, the World Trade uh, International uh, Congress of all the World Trade Centers in, 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 in the world. So that's in Ross Boulevard. We also have a mixed use uh, middle income housing development focused primarily on the second and third tier cities in the country. So, our, our objective for our shareholders is really not to be the largest, but just to, to create really meaningful shareholder value. Uh, you can see on the property side, that's where our assets are, uh, largely land. And uh, the financial services, we're very capital efficient. Our assets uh, are people, and uh, that's where we, we focus on high. So the firm itself, uh, ICCP was founded in 1988. Actually, our, our, our chairman founder, uh, Gilu Chanko, uh, had thought that just after the, the revolution of 86, this was a good time to professionalize, institutionalize um, financial services, investment banking, started to, to develop some ideas of, of how to uh, make the Philippines more attractive now that it was a new, new regime. Um, so we, uh, the investment bank itself is just a parent of uh, we, uh, you can see, we focus the investment bank focuses on merchant and acquisitions, equity cap markets, and debt cap markets. We do not use our balance sheet, um, and we try to be uh, an independent uh, financial advisor to our firms. Uh, the focus of my presentation is going to be on the M&A side. Uh, so a lot of the examples I'll share with you are specifically focused on the merchant and acquisition markets. So we'll go. You can see the, the, the bottom point. Uh, 
discusses some of the transactions we've been involved in at the local level. Maybe the ones you, the, the, with the more common consumer brands you may be familiar with, was we sold uh, Sea Air, first to Tiger Air, and subsequently to Pacific, uh, second, second tranche. Um, and then also we represented Flanders Bank on their sale to, to China Bank, which made China Bank the fifth largest bank in the Philippines. So I think every firm has their respective m and strategies. Uh, we, we like to, to think that we, we, we deploy uh, global best practices. Uh, we have uh, a very strong and dedicated team only on mergers and acquisitions. The most important element here actually is deal execution. Um, and I think uh, the deal is only as good as the client is happy. Either uh, receive the value uh, that, that he's looking for on, on the sale or uh, pays the right price when he acquires the company. Next slide. So before we jump into to some insights and, and dynamics of the local market, uh, with the exception of, say, the debt capital markets and equity capital markets, where there's a lot of robust data, uh, and that can be cut and spliced in many different ways, uh, the private equity market here, venture capital and mergers and acquisitions, there isn't a lot of data. Uh, so we, we have uh, analysts uh, in our team just scouring the, the various databases. What we'll share with you is basically our view of, of the M&A industry based on deals that were announced and value disclosed. If they were not announced, they're not on our slides. If they were announced but no value, also you did not include that. We want to look at quantifiable, quantifiable data. Okay, next please. <clears throat> so, in terms of the, this is actually looking at 2014. Our firm's view is that the size of the Philippine M&A market uh, is about 350 billion pesos, so just under $8 billion. That's a relatively big number um, if you add everything, everything up. Uh, in 2014, 126 transactions were disclosed. And if you look over the last three years, energy, which is driven by the, the Type projects, technology and telecom, which is largely the, the BPO sector, and one outlier when um, uh, PLDT bought shares in, in Rocket Internet in, in Germany prior to their listing, is also part of part of that number, and financial institutions, in which we're seeing a lot of opportunity for for consolidation nowadays. The market is dominated by a, a few very large deals. Um, however, if you look at the average size, size of transaction, it's about 2.7 billion pesos, or about $62 million. Uh, the sectors that at least we find attractive would be banking because of the consolidation. Construction, when we say construction, it's not just the, the, the developers uh, or the, 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 uh, the, the, the buildings themselves, but it's actually the whole value chain of the construction materials. Gibson board to aluminum siding and the like, because that all feeds into the construction industry. BPO, of course, is, is interesting, although, and may I share a little story about Africa a little bit later that Richard alluded to, but the industry is very different now. Uh, it's all about scale. Um, and and uh, uh, when, when we had invested in Africa in 2001, it was just emerging. Um, our investment bank handled the, the sale transaction to, to tell us. But the dynamics are, are, are very different, although there are still opportunities here. And pharmaceuticals. Um, this is very interesting, but it's a, it's a tough nut to crack. But uh, there's a lot of interest from foreign investors, uh, largely foreign strategic people coming to the Philippines, specifically in the, the pharmaceutical industry. Uh, moving to the next slide, slide eight, please. So the, the largest disclosed deal last year um, was uh, Lusitan's uh, reacquisition of Philippine Airlines. Um, actually, Del Monte, which we traced, uh, is not part of our 2014 data. It was announced in 2013, but closed in February 14. So the Del Monte deal is not here, but still, it's a consumer play, and consumer transactions are a major part of the, the value drivers on the merchant acquisitions front here. Um, you can see that the three most active sectors. Again, consumer, energy, telco, uh, technology is about half of the number of transactions and half of the total value. Uh, 
uh, the top three deals were in consumer, as well as mouse last year. So URC, the Robinsons Group, acquired New Zealand based Christian Foods for about a billion dollars. And Amerador uh, here acquired White UK in the UK for just uh, under 700 million. Um, what's important to note is, and, and following the Del Monte example, these are cross border transactions. So the ability to access capital locally and internationally by Philippine companies is unparalleled, unlike it's been seen before or now. Uh, companies with a defined strategy and a target and the access to capital can compete globally, not just regionally, but globally, and by leading brands around the world. Uh, this was not the case 10 years ago. Notable deals in 2014, I mentioned the, the uh, acquisition of PLDT into to Rocket Internet uh, prior to this thing in, uh, in the German uh, stock exchange. Uh, I think it's been a good deal for PLDT. Price is still above IPO price, uh, so they, they did quite well. Um, and then Converge just acquired uh, Stream Global, uh, which was owned by Freddie Ayala um, and the Ayala Group. Ayala owned about 25%. Uh, so that's a, a big deal. Um, I think those, there could be a few more larger ones like this in the BPO sector coming up. Uh, but again, it's about um, it's about scale and, and, and footprint. So, some interesting uh, facts. Moving on to the next couple of slides, slide nine, please. So transportation, uh, and I'll look, focus on the, the red numbers. Um, transportation consumer had a disproportionate amount of deal value. Uh, so if, if you see the, the 28 relative value to the number of deals on consumer and transportation was disproportionately high. Again, that's, that's largely driven by, by a couple of transactions I mentioned. And then if you look at, uh, again, Telco and consumer energy, they account for uh, over half Deals, number of deals, number of transactions. Uh, next one, please. Uh, so this is also an interesting way to, to cut it up. Actually, the Philippine market is quite small um, relative to mergers and acquisitions. If, if you take out the, the outliers, deal size is below uh, 750 million pesos, or about 16 million dollars. It's over 60 percent of the transactions done. Um, from an investment banking perspective, that may not be so, such a lucrative market to focus, but there are very competent advisors that, that do very well for the clients here. Um, then if we look at transactions of 15 billion and above, uh, that 57% of value uh, representing 6% of total transactions. Uh, these are the ones that, that the bigger boys will, will, will uh, advise on. The First Metros, uh, the Goldman Sachs Singapore, the CS uh, Credit Suites in Hong Kong. Uh, that, that's, the, that's the exciting uh, Transactions. For ICCP, we focus on basically the, the 1 to 10 billion vessel range in terms of transaction value. That's where we can, I think, uh, 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 devote uh, very credible resources to, to have successful uh, engagements for our clients. <coughs> we move to slide 11. Um, so just, just to br brief highlight, I mean, just looking at the history, of, and again, some of this tracks the uh, Philippine Stock Exchange market. Um, 2013 versus 12, uh, the number of transactions were relatively flat, uh, largely because also what was happening globally. Uh, a lot of the buyers, except for some of the, the, the larger local Taipans, are foreign funds. And they have a choice of where to deploy their, their capital. Uh, but 14 to versus 13, you'll, you'll see growth in the number, in the amount of value, largely because of the optimistic uh, macroeconomic um, and what we're seeing, is like these from the PE investors that are looking to come into the Philippines as well as the strategic investors, um, if the Philippines continues on its uh, economic trajectory, uh, it's actually cheaper to buy in now, although relative value would be expensive compared to other choices, but in time it'll just be more expensive. Uh, so, in a way, this is actually a really good time to, to be in the Philippines. Um, and just a, a point of reference, I, I returned to Manila in 1996 uh, from, from the U.S. And uh, that was the, that was when the Philippines was, was one of the emerging tigers in, in Asia. President Ramos was president, economics were doing really well. There was a lot more politics involved in those days than, than now. The politics will always be part of our, our, our business culture. Um, but uh, uh, I haven't seen 
challenge uh, robustness in, in, in financial services across the board, whether it's uh, ECM, DCM, or, or M&A that, that needs to help. My, my personal view is that this will continue. Um, if I provide a personal commentary, I, I think no matter who is president next year, uh, the Philippines' uh, uh, economic fundamentals appear to be, I'd say, long term. Um, I, I don't think things will turn around upside down. Uh, uh, the drivers are in place, and I think we're, we are just really on, on the verge of moving forward uh, along the slides of what George and, and, and Hans has seen. So this is a very exciting time in our economic economic stage of development. Uh, slide 12, please. Uh, just just reiterates what we had talked about before. Again, everything's driven by consumer energy and, 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 and telco. I think if, um, at the end of the day, probably um, consumer will, will be the leader, um, given our population, uh, as, as well as the middle, the emerging middle class. I saw some of the economic slides about uh, uh, our, our savings rate going up. Historically, the Philippines was the lowest uh, savings country in the region, which meant we were the highest consumers in the region per capita. Uh, that, that's kind of balanced. Um, so this is just some general observations on M&A deal characteristics in, in the Philippines. Uh, in general, deals do take longer here than, than in other markets. And we do a fair amount of work in, in Silicon Valley where deals can be closed in 30 days um, if everyone's motivated uh, to meet that timetable. <clears throat> Locally, a, a private company could take six months to 15 months or a year and a half. Um, public companies have the ability to forward faster because due diligence is, is cleaner, um, governance and transparency is, is in place already, so the typical deal cycle is, is, is much quicker on a public company uh, transaction. Some considerations here to, to keep in mind uh, from the seller's decision regarding deal structures is one that your internal revenue um, is, is quite vigilant and aggressively enforcing tax codes, so uh, from the seller's point of view and, and capital gains tax and the like, uh, it's best to, to do it right, otherwise uh, the deal could come back. Also, part of the delay in closing is, um, for those who are not familiar, actually to transfer shares of assets require a BIR certification and tax to pay. That can take a long, long time, that involves a long form audit, so depending what month of the year you're involved in, you may have to do all over again. Uh, that, that is a limitation, and of course, the Philippines Nuances and local market considerations and in terms of uh, comfort level of, of principles, uh, contingent liabilities. And uh, another interesting fact is 95% of businesses registered in the Philippines um, are small and medium enterprise, so less than 100 million investors in size and up to 200 uh, employees. So, What's registered here? Sole proprietor, so someone who may own a sari sari store um, is part of this part of this plan. Most uh, financial service firms probably focus on the, the one percent that actually have scale, volume, proper bookkeeping, and the like. Uh, and of course, corporate governance uh, may have to be strengthened. But with this, I, we, we view this as, as just a transition of where we are in our economic cycle. Um, it's about the uh, entrepreneurial families. Um, Evolving to make a decision to, to, to run their, their family business perhaps more professionally, uh, perhaps to consider going public, which is does have a time frame in terms of putting the right culture and discipline in place. Uh, but that there's a trade-off there of uh, having disclosure and transparency to outside parties versus uh, valuation, because if it's a private company, privately held, your valuation is basically your, your book value. When you go to the, the public markets, you're looking at some market multiple, which could uh, significantly enhance shareholder value as well as create liquidity. Next, please. So, um, what I'd like to do is, is, is kind of um, recap also uh, using these learnings here what ICCP has been doing for the last uh, 17 years um, at the, in terms of our financial, service, financial services. Um, ASEAN plan, which, which we have kind of put in place. place. We're not large, um, but we need to differentiate ourselves, and, and I think 
compete with much larger uh, uh, financial services firms. And um, you know, we don't have a broad base of clients, but we do have clients that we can, uh, as long as they're happy, we can go very deep as, as their needs evolve. So we need to continually look at ways which we can add value to, to our clients. And of course, we also like to fly the Philippine flag whenever we're outside the Philippines. Um, so a little peek into our own little ASEAN platform. Um, next please. So as I, as I mentioned, we have ICCP here. Um, and again, I'm just speaking for the financial services. The property side is strictly uh, Philippine exposure. Uh, we um, provide a broad list of services um, across debt capital markets, every capital markets, and financial services. In Singapore, I, I mentioned to you, we have a licensed asset management company there. Um, our client base there are not Filipinos, but European families that are looking for Asian exposure. So uh, we, we manage our capital in Singapore, and if, if maybe one example is one of the families we manage owns a, um, a pasta plant in Italy, they wanted uh, access to flour milling and other pasta plants in Asia. So we looked at uh, uh, targeting and acquiring uh, pasta facilities for them in the building. So, for example, our uh, client in Kedusha would engage ICCB to help them uh, navigate to the Philippine market. Uh, then in the U.S., we have, um, in, in Silicon Valley, uh, our, our venture capital team as well as our team here, where we've invested uh, about 75, 80% of our assets actually in Silicon Valley. But all of those companies, the, the, the requirement is they must have strong Asian, ideally Philippine angles. So for example, um, a semiconductor we would invest in, a uh, semiconductor uh, company would eventually have to do at a certain point of scale their, their chips at assembly uh, or sourcing out of Asia. So we've had I think, three or four of our portfolio companies actually um, uh, outsource or build their own plants in the Philippines, hire Philippine workers, and, and, and also attract the the supply chain of their uh, uh, various components in, into the Philippines. Uh, next, next slide, please. Um, so I mean, what we try to do is, is make sure we, we link, and that's the, pretty much my goal, is, is linking our different businesses and how, helping our clients achieve their own uh, ASEAN or Asian strategy. Uh, in the case of Amber Green, it was our second fund that invested there. We were a latecomer to the, to the call center industry Philippines, um, uh, there are about three or four others, uh, but what we, and we actually could find maybe about eight or ten opportunities, but we decided to invest in Abergree, we're the largest shareholder, um, and in about two and a half years, that had grown from 40 seats to 2,600 seats, um, and our, our, our we, the, the board um, of Abergree uh, engaged which we represented, engaged ICCP on an arm's length basis to represent the sale. Uh, we identified Telish in Canada, who was sniffing around, um, and, and basically in, in just under three years, we um, uh, negotiated the, the exit for the shareholders uh, to, to Telus, uh, or the sale to Telus, and, and, and I think to date still, on an IRR and multiple basis, it is, it is uh, by far the, the highest return of, of an investor center here. Other, other ones with higher values, but in terms of shareholder returns, I think Amber Green is still, still, still unmatched. Um, so this is kind of our, our view of how we like to play in, in our sandbox. Our sandbox is not large, but we like to be narrow and, and deep in where we play and, and, and try to differentiate ourselves and, and help our clients in any way we can. So with that, with that I'd like to conclude our, our